Hi, everyone, and welcome to part three of my series, The Red Pill Movie Rebuttals, where I'm taking each of the feminists who appeared in the film to give the feminist perspective and to counter the assertions of MRAs. Of all the feminists interviewed, one of the highest echelon voices they rolled out was Ms. Magazine Executive Editor and Feminist Majority Foundation Executive Director Catherine Spiller. Spiller is indeed a big gun, or at the very least she was holding one, which she pointed directly at her feet and started blasting away like Rambo the moment Cassie J. allowed her to open her mouth. Before we start in with Spiller's oral self-destruction, though, I must give Jay some props for the sheer realism and blunt honesty with which she approached talking to the feminists. Cassie reveals to viewers that listening to MRAs and then fact-checking their assertions had caused her to challenge her own feminist beliefs. That prompted her to reach out to leading feminists to see what they had to say. And, of course, to talk to a leading feminist like Spiller... Jay had to be daring and forge her way to the capital of oppression, the mecca of the downtrodden, Beverly Hills, the home of the Feminist Majority Foundation. During the interview, Spiller fielded a variety of questions, including her reaction to the MRM assertion of gender symmetry in domestic violence, which she answered with a typical feminist aplomb on the whole issue of domestic violence. Uh, that's just another word, really. It's a cleanup word about wife beating, because that's really what it is, or dating violence. Uh, and it's not girls that are beating up on boys. It's boys that are beating up on girls and using violence to intimidate and to control. And we have very few what's called domestic violence shelters, which are places that women can leave their home with their children and get a new start, get out of the violence. But they're not nearly enough of them. We need more funding and more resources because it, it is a tremendous um, disadvantage for women and girls. And there you have it, straight from the feminist mouth. Domestic violence is so totally, completely a problem defined by men beating up on women that the term domestic violence itself is a misnomer. It's wife beating, pure and simple. Now, I would suggest to Spiller that while all violence is male, not all males are married. So wife beating may be a bit outmoded. Perhaps we should just call it male violence so that it covers all forms of domestic abuse. Well, except for dating violence, which we could clarify as male dating violence. After all, we really don't want to confuse people into believing that some violence between unmarried couples is perpetuated by women. That would not fit the feminist ideological model, and therefore, it would not be true. So asserts the subjugated, disadvantaged woman from her headquarters in Beverly Hills. On a more serious note, I would not bother to send Spiller the volumes of research now available, including that from the CDC, that concludes symmetry or near-symmetry in intimate partner violence. She wouldn't read it. And if she did, her mind would quickly go to work on how to bury it. Her bread and butter, which afford her posh living in some of the most expensive real estate in the world, is the myth. But it is worth noting here for all the misguided people out there who've convinced themselves that feminism was a movement for equality till the lunatics of the third wave took over, that Spiller is well into her 60s, a fact that she has apparently taken great care to make sure is not on her wiki page. She is, despite her vanity, a dyed-in-the-wool second waver. And like her sisters, Gloria Steinem, Catherine McKinnon, and the late Andrea Dworkin, she is steeped in enough anti-male hostility to make Jessica Valenti and Amanda Marcant have a catfight for second place. And if you will allow me a bit of a digression, I remind you that Belfort Bax wrote The Fraud of Feminism in 1913, over a hundred years ago. And in its prophetic pages, you can read the same precise indictments of feminism's corruption and puerile solipsism now in full bloom across the alternative media and finally seeping its way into mainstream consciousness. Feminism was never ever, ever 
about equality. Spiller's second wave-inspired denial and dishonesty is rooted in feminist ideology and comes brazenly to the fore when Jay asks her if there is any area of life in which she thinks men face discrimination. So do you think that men are being discriminated against in any way? Not under the law. Men are not disadvantaged under our laws um, or in the business world as a class, men are not underrepresented on corporate boards or at the top of the Fortune 1000 companies. Like I said, puerile solipsism. In Spiller's world, across the board social and legal acceptability of the genital mutilation of half the population based on sex isn't discrimination. Male-only selective service isn't discrimination, nor is multiple federal office on women's health with no counterparts for men. There is no legal discrimination against men in family court, no sentencing disparity, and no suspension or abridgment of due process when men are accused of sexual crimes. None of this exists. None of it, because Catherine Spiller rolls her eyes and says so. I sometimes wonder how on earth we even need a men's rights movement with so much feminist buffoonery on full display to the world. I mean, it would seem that with these people resting on so much lunacy-driven dishonesty, crowing constantly that the sky is green and the world is flat, that the better angels of our nature would just pat feminists on the head, show them some pity, and then ignore everything that comes out of their mouths that we would generously tolerate them for the village idiots they are and set ourselves about pursuing a better society for all. But we don't. Instead, we coddle and enable these ostensibly innocuous invalids to the point that we create monsters of them and then unleash them on our children. I wonder how this can be, since, you know, gynocentrism isn't any more real than discrimination against men. Whatever our predilection for this particular brand of human folly, we can see it manifest in this last clip of Speller, gazing down her nose and dripping with condescension for her fellow human beings, simply for trying to shine a light on some long-ignored problems. Think about it. Grandfather's generation probably had it pretty well, right? Um, All of his needs, his shirts were ironed, his... All of that was always taken care of. Well, you know, grow up. Now, it's hard for me to imagine how Spiller can be so oblivious to where our grandfathers went and what they did wearing those freshly ironed shirts and having so much taken care of for them. Let's consider that alongside a reprise or two from Spiller. Think about it grandfather's generation probably had it pretty well, right? Um, All of his needs, his shirts were ironed, all of that was always taken care of. Well, you know, grow up. Think about it. Grandfather's generation probably had it pretty well, right? Um, All of his needs, his shirts were ironed, all of that was always taken care of. Well, you know, grow up. I'm closing this talk with a couple of requests. One, if you have not seen The Red Pill, there are links in the low bar for both rental and purchase. The movie is a powerful tool in putting a spotlight on the feminist mindset and the issues faced by men and boys. Personally, I'd like to see more work like this, from Cassie J. and even from other filmmakers. That means there has to be a market for it. The best, easiest way to support that idea is to chip in and rent or buy the movie. Get a copy for a friend or a family member. Pass it around and let it do its magic. I happen to know it has already changed some minds. And speaking of support, spring has finally arrived. Each change of season, I make an appeal for support for the work I do here. I welcome new Patreon supporters in any amount. There's a link to the Patreon in the last 20 seconds of this video as well as in the low bar. 
There is also a link to my donation page where you can make a one-time donation or subscribe to my work on a monthly basis. After more than a year of building support, I am nearly at the point where I'm not losing money on what I'm doing. Your effort today could help me reach that tipping point, enabling me to keep doing this in the days ahead. As always, I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. And remember, feminism is cancer.